Corporal. Stay. The knocks are too hot. And for my own part, I have not a case of lives. The humor of it is too hot. And that is the very plain song of it. <laughs> the plain song is most just. But who knows you're bound? Not go and come. Such battles drop and die. And sword and shield in bloody field doth win immortal fame. Would I were in an alehouse in London, I would give all my fame for hot avail and safety. And I, if wishes would prevail with me, my purpose should not fail with me, but settle what I hide. As truly but not as truly as bird doth sing on bow. Up to the breach, you dogs! Avant, you cullions! Be merciful, great duke, to men of mold. Abate thy rage, abate thy manly rage. Abate thy rage, great duke! Good barcock, abate thy rage. Use lenity, sweet chuck. These be good humors! Your honor wins bad humors. As young as I am, I have observed these three swashers. I am boy to them all three, but all they three, though they would serve me, could not be man to me. For indeed, three such antics do not amount to a man. For Bardolph, he is white-livered and red-faced, by the means whereof a faces it out, but fights not. For Pistol, he hath a killing tongue and a quiet sword by the means whereof a breaks words and keeps whole weapons. For Nim, he hath heard that men of few words are the best men. Therefore he scorns to say his prayers, lest it should be thought a coward. But his few bad words are matched with as few good deeds, for I never broke any man's head but his own, and that was against a post when he was drunk. They will steal anything and call it a purchase. Bardolf stole a loot case. Tore it twelve leagues and sold it for three halfpence. Nim and Bardolf are sworn brothers in filching, and in Calais they stole a fire shovel. I knew by that piece of service the men would carry coals. They would have me as familiar with men's pockets as their gloves or their handkerchiefs, which makes much against my manhood. If I should take from another's pocket and put it into mine, for it is plain pocketing up of wrongs, I must leave them and seek some better service. Their villainy goes against my weak stomach. And therefore I must cast it up. Captain Flewellen, you must come presently to the mines. The Duke of Gloucester would speak with you. To the mines? Tell you the Duke is not so good to come to the mines. For look you, the mines is not according to the disciplines of the war. The concavities of it is not sufficient for, look you, the adversary. You may discuss unto the duke, look you, is did himself four yards under the counter mines by Cheshire. I think I will plough up all, if there is not better directions. The Duke of Gloucester, to whom the order of the siege is given, is altogether directed by an Irishman. A very valiant gentleman, in faith. Is it Captain McMorris, is it not? I think it be. By Cheshire, he is an ass. As in the world, I will verify as much in his beard. Be he has no more directions in the true disciplines of the wars, look you, of the Roman disciplines, than is a puppy dog. Here he comes, send the Scots captain, Captain Jamie with him. Captain Jamie is a marvelous, valorous gentleman, that is certain, and of great expedition and knowledge in the ancient wars upon my particular knowledge of his directions. By Jesu, he will maintain his argument as well as any military man in the world in the disciplines of the pristine wars of the Romans. I say good day, Captain Flewellen. Good evening to your worship, good Captain Jamie. How now, Captain McMorris, have you quit the mines? Have the pioneers given or? Ah, uh, by Christ, uh, tis ill done. The work is done. Uh, the trumpets sound the retreat. By my hand, I swear, and my father's soul. The work is ill done. I is give it o'er. 
I would have blown up the town, so Christ save me, la, in an hour. Oh, tis ill done, tis ill done, by my hand, tis ill done. Captain Mac Morris, I beseech you now, will you vouchsafe me, look you, a few disputations with you as partly touching or concerning the disciplines of the war, the Roman wars, in the way of argument, look you, and friendly communication, partly to satisfy my opinion and partly for the satisfaction, look you, of my mind as touching the direction of the military discipline, that is, the point. It shall be very good, good faith, good captain's bath, and I shall quit you with good leave as I may pick occasion. That shall I marry. Tis no time to discourse, so Christ save me, the day is hot, and the weather, and the wars, and the king, and the dukes. It is no time to discourse. The town is beseeched, the trumpet calls us to the breach, and we talk, and be Christ, do nothing. Tis shame for us all, so God save me, tis shame to stand still. It's a shame by my hand. And there's throats to be cut and work to be done. And there's nothing done. So Christ save me, law. Fight a mess. Ere these eyes of mine take themselves to slumber, I'll do good service, or I'll lig in the ground for it. I, or go to death, or I'll pay it as valorously as I may. That shall I surely do. That is the breath and the long. Mary, I would full fain heard some question between you twain. Mm. Captain McMorris. I think, look you, under your correction, there's not many of your nation. Of my nation? What is my nation? Is it a villain? And a bastard and a knave and a rascal? What is my nation? Who talks of my nation? Look you, if you take the matter otherwise than as meant, Captain McMorris, peradventure I shall think you do not use me with that affability as in discretion you ought to use me. Look you, being as good a man as yourself, both in the disciplines of war and the derivation of my birth, and in other particularities. I do not know you so good a man as myself, so Christ save me, I shall cut off your head. Gentlemen, both, you will mistake each other. Ah, that is a foul fault. A parley sounded. The town sounds a parley. Captain McMorris, when there is more better opportunity to be required, look you, I will be so bold as to tell you I know the disciplines of war, and there is an end. <laughs>